Hello, thank you for joining us. Today we have a presentation of a school, uh, Rye Orden High School in San Francisco. Uh, just let me brief you a little about your way. Um, we are a family-owned company, a study abroad company. We are international, but not multinational. We place 75 students. Uh, these are our numbers for this year. And we have offices in Portugal, Spain, Hungary, and Brazil. Um, and we are focused on high school programs. Our aim is to provide high quality and personalized uh, programs. And our contacts, if they are easy, you can drop us a, a line or an email to info your way to education and then uh, Portugal, Spain, Hungary, and Brazil. And we would love to connect you, for example, with this amazing school, Roy Orden. And that's and now I handle the presentation to Joe. He will talk us about uh, Roy Orden High School in San Francisco. Thank you, thank you, um, thank you for having me. And I first want to say um, hello. Uh, my name is Joe Cop. I work at Archbishop Reardon. Um, I work in admissions um, at, in the outreach side. I also live in the boarding program at school. I'm a mm -hmm. resident advisor, so I can answer a lot of questions and have a lot of news about the day-to-day -day life as well as a as an international boarding student. Um, and I also coach in some of our sports. And what you're going to hear from me today is a lot about what makes up our school, not only academically, but also our school culture from athletics, extracurricular activities, clubs. Um, and what, what I really want today is not only to present to you about our school, but also be able to answer some questions. So, Good. So I'll get going with our slides. So the first thing we always talk about when we talk about written is, is the uniqueness and where we are. Um, we, we really truly have the San Francisco and Bay Area at our fingertips. And you know where our location is, we're 10 minutes from downtown mm -hmm. um, in the city center. We're, we're the only boarding school located in San Francisco um, and really one of the very small few located in a major metropolitan city. You know, we're 20, 15 to 20 minutes away from the airport, depending on traffic, which has a huge international mm -hmm. airport. So it makes it really easy for our students to get in and out on trips when they go home back and forth. Um, and, and it's just such a cultural and technology hub, right? There's innovation, there's creation, there's design, there's engineering, there's fun things to do for our students. You can see some of our students on the cable cars downtown and, and one of the pictures. Um, and then within that network, it gives us the ability to go on trips, not only to go see great architecture, but also go visit colleges, right? We went on a Cal Berkeley visit um two weeks ago we also do fun things like go on trips with our students to you know great america theme park we have so many things to do mm -hmm. beyond just being at school for our students that it truly creates the real american high school experience for our students right and 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 it just it makes it such a great time for them now who we are when we talk about who we are we have over 900 students um our boarding program has 40 international students currently right now from 18 different countries. So we're a very, very diverse group within the school. Um, and really what we aim to do at Reardon is prepare young women and men for leadership and lifelong success. And we're gonna do that through a really rigorous college prep curriculum with a college prep schedule and tough classes, but we're also gonna do that through support, right? With a house system. We're gonna do it through support with extracurricular activities right, between sports and band and theater, drama, um, clubs on campus. We're also going to do that through support with our residential advisor staff and our director of boarding. And we're also gonna do that through our teacher-student relationships. Um, our community is a really strong family atmosphere. And that's one of the things that we're really well known for and that we take great pride in. Um, and if you really look at how Reardon has grown over the years, we're one of the fastest growing schools in the Bay Area and really one of the most innovative. You, what you'll see in the next couple of slides is a lot of our programming options that we offer. We're a, we're a smaller school, but we have big school programming. So academically, um, we have over 30 AP and honors programs, everything. We have AP programs and, and classes in sciences, maths, um, technologies, engineering, um, English, foreign language, Really, if, if you are looking for your student to take those AP courses and be on that track to go to, to, go to college and attend, 
um, at a great school, you're going to be able to find those things here academically. Now, we also have certain pathways. Um, if, if students are interested in those pathways, mm -hmm. we have four, a four year honors engineering program. And what that program is, you'll see it a little bit later. We have a four year biomedical science program. Um, we also have a huge performing arts program within school that has a couple of different divisions with physical arts. We have a beautiful theater um, and, and drama program. Um, and we also have a visual performing arts program for those who are interested in digital media and learning how to create and design things digitally. Athletics were a powerhouse, and we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. In terms of college, right, we, we all know that college is, is critically important, especially after attending a, high, a, a school like Reardon. And, and when colleges see our students who have gone to Reardon, they see kids who have pushed themselves not only in the classroom, but kids who have pushed themselves through extracurriculars and kids who have pushed themselves to grow in the community as well. And so what that does for our students is when they apply to colleges, they get accepted to a lot of the, some of the best schools in the country, right? You're talking the UC Berkeley's, the Stanford's, the Notre Dame's, the Georgetown's, and many more, right? And, and a lot of our students are driven to not just go to college, they're driven to go to some of the best colleges in the country, right? And so, and so what that does is it creates a really good competitive atmosphere in mm -hmm. the classroom as well as outside of the classroom. So our honors engineering program, um, it's a computer engineering program and it's designed truly to take a student and develop that student to be prepared and ready to succeed at college level engineering. Um, we really won't believe in training our students, not only while they're in school, but training them beyond once they're done with Reardon so that they can go find success in college and in the real world. Computer engineering is one of the great spots to see that we have a beautiful maker space on campus an innovation lab um, here you can see our direct our our head of the engineering program mr frank toronto um, and we offer multiple programs within our computer engineering program right you're going to have app development with swift you're going to have advanced engineering and engineering you're going to be able to learn javascript and have be able to take an ap computer science class and, and learn about ai and be able to use the cnc drill and the 3d printer and all of the cool things that, that go on in our program. Now, if students are maybe interested in some of those things, but don't necessarily wanna be in the program, wait, the way our schedule works at school, we allow students to take a certain amount of electives within that, within that program. So we actually have an mm -hmm. elective course each year that'll allow some of our students to join in and take part in little bits and tidbits of that program. When we move on to you know talking about our academic innovation, this is one of our, our new programs that we're very excited about, and it's our biomedical science program. And so what this biomedical science program is, this, is really designed for is our students who are interested in taking that path down, you know, some form of science, whether it be medicinal and they want to go to medicine school, whether it be a forensics take, and maybe they want to work and maybe they want to work in like the criminal justice system, the justice system as you know, tracking DNA mm -hmm. and looking at those things or whether they want to be more on the biomedical side, right? Looking in the, into the technology side of things and being able to run experiments in labs, right? So we, what we've done is we've combined all of those things and we've seen, you know, this is where the world is going. And so we wanna be able to pre prepare our students to be able to find those spots for them and find success mm -hmm. in, the, in the new world. Um, so when you look at, you know, kind of the course schedule, it's a great outline right there, right? They're going to learn the principles of bi biomedicine. They're also going to learn about the human body. They're going to learn about how to stop different things that, that happen within it. All of the new technologies that are happening in the biomedical innovations class. And then they're actually going to have a capstone internship and project. Um, and, and so a great example into kind of who we are in the classroom and how we learn. Um, you know, this first last first semester last year, um, their entire project was about learning about forensics and DNA. And then they actually, literally their test was to solve a crime scene that mm -hmm. was around campus. So it's just, what we do is not only, not only are we teaching our students in the classroom about the material, but we're teaching skills through the material because we believe that what we're teaching our students is important, but so is how we're teaching them, right? And how they're learning and what they're going to be able to take on beyond high school. Now, athletics, kind of switching out of the classroom. Right. And so when you look at athletics, we're a powerhouse. Um, 
We're extremely well known in the Bay Area, not only within San Francisco, but across across the Bay Area and, and really California. And, and when you look at a lot of our sports teams, you're going to see not only really competitive opportunities um, for our student athletes, but you're also going to see beautiful facilities, right? We've spent over the last two years, we've, re, we've rebuilt or redesigned or built brand new facilities for all of our sports teams, right? Mm-hmm. We want our athletes, to, our student athletes to be able to have a great experience. Um, and and that, that means winning, number one, obviously. That means developing as a student athlete, but it also means being able to have great coaches, great mentors and great resources and great facilities. Currently in the dorms, um, right now in our international boarding program, we actually have half of our students are involved in a varsity sport. Um, at some point throughout the year, we have currently, we have 12 people running track this spring. Um, we have we have a few basketball players that are finishing up their playoff run right now. Um, and, and then we have a, a golfer and, and about four or five tennis players as well. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a pretty exciting time right now. Um, but when you look at our fall sports, what we offer, we offer football, um, cross country, girls volleyball, girls golf, and girls tennis. Um, you know, a little bit of tidbits about those programs, right? Football, we have the Mayor Athletic Complex, which was the field you just saw. Um, that's 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 a brand new field for for our students. It's the home of all of our outdoor sports. Mm-hmm. Our cross country team, if 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 anyone that sees this is loves running, um, we're one of the best cross country programs in the state. Um, girls volleyball is an amazing program that we have. They've done a great job in growing it and, and it become very competitive. Girls golf and boys golf also as well. That's in the spring. We play at TPC Harding Park, which is home of the U.S. Open last year. Um, it's a beautiful course and a beautiful opportunity. Our winter sports, um, we have boys basketball, girls basketball, boys soccer, girls soccer and wrestling. I think when you look at who we are as a community, right, I've hinted at who we are and and, and what we talk about. And a great example of that is at a basketball game. Um, we're a local neighborhood school, meaning that we have we have houses around us in a, in a safe area. Um, and what that does is it allows our community to support each other, but also mm-hmm. the local community loves Reardon as well. So they come and they're going to be at they're going to be at you know any of our students' athletic contests. They're going to be watching the drama performances, the fall play, and the spring musical. They're going to they're going to be interacting. Um, we have a very large performance band. Um, it's it's extremely competitive, and they're at every game, every sporting event. They play in the they play in the spring musical, so it's just a really immersive community experience. The last sports that we offer in the spring that we're currently currently going on right now we have baseball, swimming, boys golf, track and field, lacrosse, and tennis. Um, coaches within so some of our resident advisors um, we all coach a sport. So we have a a lacrosse coach that lives in the dorms. We have a tennis coach that lives in the dorms. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a baseball coach that lives in the dorms and a a football and a basketball coach. So even within our dorm community, right, in our international boarding dorms, um, we really promote and want our students to grow and excel in whatever their interests and passions are, right? So we're never going to be in a situation where we tell a kid, hey, no, I don't think that's for you, right? We want them to learn learn by doing, right? We want them to grow mm-hmm. by doing things. So we're a very active community. The performing arts um, and kind of switching to, to off the field, off the court, right? So we have the Linland Theater and it's the oldest and the largest high school theater in San Francisco. It's it's a beautiful facility. It has brand new technology in it, in it within it. Um, our theater program is highly competitive. We have a fall play and a spring musical every single year. They're always sold out. They do an amazing job. And it's all really truly student ran and student led. So if maybe our students, we have students that don't want to necessarily act in the play or sing in the musical, but want to be a part of it, um, they actually can be a part of stage tech and stage crew, building the sets, making sure the lighting, the sound is all working. When it all gets put in motion, it's usually between 125 to 150 students that are really a part of each player musical. Um, when you look at our band, Right, our band, we have a marching band, a concert band, and a jazz band. So we have three different forms of band, right? And so for students that are interested in playing an instrument and learning an instrument, um, we have that ability more towards our beginning band. If students have been playing an instrument for a really long time mm-hmm. and they really want to be in, in a competitive atmosphere where they get to perform at the highest level and go to competitions, we offer that as well. 
Um, and, and so we have a, usually year in, year out, we have about 80 to 100 members of our band um, that, are, that go on trips and competitions and perform in parades. Um, we do go on an international trip every other year. Um, each odd year, they go to Disneyland and perform, and each even year, they go to a different international trip. So, for example, right before um, COVID, we actually got to perform in the New Year's Day parade in Rome. Um, so it's, it's a really, really, really cool and unique situation in terms of performance band. And then we also offer dance, right? We have ballet, we have contemporary dance. That's a class on campus as well as a club. And then some mm -hmm. of our students also have the ability to, you know, like our boarding students love, we have a group that has their own dance group. Um, and there's five or six of them and they open the theater at nights while the others go to the gym and they just uh -huh. go on the stage and perform and dance. So really, really, we have a lot of different creative outlets for our students. When you look at student life, I think, you know, this is a great snapshot into who we are as a boarding community. Um, you know, students get access to San Francisco in a way that no other, no other boarding, boarding students could. Um, you know, we're very active, obviously, in our community, but we also are very active on the weekends, right? Mm -hmm. We go on a weekend trip every single week. So it's sometimes we go on a hike towards the ocean, right? We're 10 minutes from the ocean. Sometimes we go downtown and we go to Ghirardelli Square or to the Golden Gate Bridge, like you can see. Sometimes we just have a family meal, like you can see in the top right. Um, our students come from over 18 different countries. So it's, it's a very diverse group of people. It's people from all over the world, from multiple countries. We have 40 students a year. In terms of the dorms, um, we, have, we have singles and doubles. Um, and, and, and the dorm is, is, a, is a really nice dorm. They're, they're all really well done. Um, they have, each student gets a bed, um, a sink. They also have their own closet armoire, um, as well as there's, there's uh, multiple bathrooms in each hall. Um, and the, the floors are split between a boys hall and girls, girls hall as mm -hmm. well. Um, in terms of college, you know, I always, I, I wanted to kind of circle back on college. I know we spoke about it a little bit, but one of the unique things about our boarding program is that we're close to so many different schools, but mm -hmm. also we offer additional college counseling because of the resident advisors in our program. So we actually have two counselors, including our director of boarding, Mr. David Lynn, who went to school at Reardon um, and graduated from here. And so he, the, we have two counselors in our program. And what they do is they, they have the ability to help them with their classes while they're here to make sure they're getting the classes that they need. But also they have the ability to help them plan for the future as well, right? Mm -hmm. As they start to become sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Um, one of the things that we tried to do a really good job of this, this year specifically um, now that everything's open is go visit these schools, right? So we've been to a couple of different schools around and we're continuing to do that and set up those tours this spring. All of our dormitories are on campus. So students don't have to worry about, you know, is it, do I have a long walk or where am I mm -hmm. going to, how far do I have to get from home? No, I'm literally actually sitting in my office, looking at the dorms right now to my right. Um, it's a, it's a two minute walk to all classes. So it, it makes it really convenient for our students to be able to find successful opportunities, right? They never have to worry about, oh, well, it's gonna take this long to get here. No, everything's really set up for them to, to, have, to have it easy and find success. And so the last part, right, our, our admissions process, um, the link is, a, is above on there in terms, of, in terms of the process, right? It's really an application. Um, and then once you fill out that application, send in your passport, a copy of your passport, um, a copy of, of the child's transcripts. If, if test scores are needed, test scores are optional for our students, um, as well as ESL. In, in terms of what happens after that initial process of the application, the next thing that happens is an interview. So my office, mm -hmm. either myself or Mr. Curtin, our director of admissions reaches out um, and, and we conduct an interview via Zoom, Skype or WeChat, whatever is easiest for our students. Really, that's what we wanna make sure and do whatever's easiest for our prospective families. And then tuition, right? After that, you get your decision and then tuition gets sent from Mr. Curtin, our director of admissions. Um, tuition is currently $58,800. And that's gonna include tuition, room and board and insurance as well. Um, and, and we do have scholarships that are available. And so mm -hmm. I, I first wanna say, you know, 
that's really everything we have at Archbishop Rudin. It's an inclusive experience that's going to allow our students to grow and, and allow your student, right, if you're listening to this, to, to really take advantage of all of their opportunities, right, in a city that is a major metropolitan market where they can go and explore things, but also be at a home and in a family atmosphere where they can truly grow into the best versions of themselves. Great. Great. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, great presentation. I have some questions. For for example, what I love in school is the fact um, 900 students, so mostly yeah. are American students living with their families mm -hmm. in the in San Francisco, and mostly it's a day school, right? Yeah. It's, it's, yes. So it's a big uh, American high school. Yes. Um, so students can have uh, 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 really American friends, and then the boarding with uh, international friends. So I think it's a great um, uh, mixture. Can, and can you elaborate a little bit on this, how you view the school being yeah. a, a small boarding program and within a big, uh, a big school? Because 900 students is, is big for a private school. Absolutely, absolutely. And so you're exactly right, right? Our students get to experience almost the truest form of American high school experience, just like you mm -hmm. said right? They're going to get to do all the things that we talked about previously, but some of our students, their, their favorite thing on campus is they, they get to have these American friends, mm -hmm. right? right? And, and so what we've done in our program is made sure that we allow time for that, right? So school gets out at 2.40 every day and mm -hmm. from 2.40 to 5, you know, we have the door open at the bottom and kids come and bring up their friends and play in our recreational room and hang out and play video games together and go on trips together mm -hmm. and go to the mall off campus. Um, the nice thing about our location, right? I mentioned that it's a neighborhood school. And so we have a street that's a really long popular street with a bunch of different restaurants and coffee shops and stores, little shops. Um, and so what a lot of our students do right after, as they get out of school is they check in with an RA and then they actually go down the road with their friends and go eat mm -hmm. or go shopping, have a coffee, um, sit and talk, do homework and study. So it just really offers them that experience to, you know, before we eat dinner, they're going to have that time that, to be just a regular high school teenager, mm -hmm. right? And have mm -hmm. that true American high school experience where you go hang out with your friends and you relax and you, you just get that experience. And that's something that I love that we offer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And can you describe, for example, um, typical um, weekend, uh, the activities, for example, the Saturday and the Sunday. Uh, during the week, they are pretty much busy with, with yeah. school, with sports. Yeah. Um, and when, what, uh, what about weekends? What, uh, what is yeah. the, the, yeah. the activities? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so Saturdays, Saturdays and Sundays, for, I always start with the meals first, right? We have brunch at 11 a.m., uh, from mm -hmm. 11 a.m. to noon, and then dinner is from 5 to 6. So we kind of try to structure everything around those times because we know mm -hmm. our, kids, mm -hmm. our kid, kids get hungry. You know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and so what we do around those things, right, we let our students kind of sleep in in the mornings on the weekends. Um, and then after mm -hmm. brunch is really when we, start get, when we start getting going. We have a boarding van that we take any students who are interested on any activities we take them with us. Um, it's not like, you know, we have to all hop into this big bus or wait for all these things. Mm -hmm. We really have, we can go anytime we want. Um, and so, you know, for example, last two weekends ago, um, we went to Cal Berkeley, right? And mm -hmm. they, went, they went to Cal Berkeley and visited the school. Then they went to a basketball game. Then, then we came back, they had dinner. Um, and then after that, what we did is we watched a movie in our theater, right? We have a huge movie screen in our theater. Mm -hmm. so really, it's like our it's own personal good. movie theater. Yeah, and we're streaming, you know, we can play Netflix, Disney Plus, um, HBO Max. And so we let our students kind of always vote on which movie and then we roll from there, we get some popcorn, get some snacks. And then on Sunday, um, it's similar, but then we also arrange different activities as well. Like last Sunday, we went to the, a hike on Montera State Park, which is on the ocean. Um, mm -hmm. Usually we go bowling once or twice a month. Um, we try to do different things in the city, like mini golf. There's like an outdoor mini golf putt putt place. Um, mm -hmm. We've done things like play bubble soccer and archery, and I mean everything in between. Sometimes it's just a setting where we also understand that, like sometimes kids on a week weekend, 
really they just want to relax mm-hmm. or they just kind of sure. want to be on their own. And we give them the freedom to do that, right? Mm-hmm. We have mm-hmm. what, what we try to do when our students first get here in the first couple months is show them all the places that they can go have fun and show mm-hmm. them how to get there. And then over time, show them how to use public transit. And then it gives them mm-hmm. the ability and the freedom and the, you know, kind of that, that individual individualism for them to feel like, okay, I can go here. This is how I get there. Boom. And, they, and so they work on those habits of not only, not only having fun, but growing as an adult. Right. And, mm-hmm. and learning that's how to, great. That's very learning, important. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what we do. So it's not a, a fast uh, school. Uh, it's an open school to the community, so they yes. are they will be allowed to to have some some freedom for for so to speak yes. and, and be able yes. to to grow as a yes. uh, takes responsibility. Yes. Um, and I, I think is is very very interesting that you mentioned the first couple of months for them to to integrate and then you give them some freedom to yes. choose their. Uh, I think it's very interesting. And, and during the week, you have um, a study hall uh, after school. It's um, after dinner. Uh, yes. So until after school, it's sports and clubs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have dinner from five to six. And then yes. uh, after you have a study hall. Yeah, which goes from which mm-hmm. goes from six to eight. Um, we mm-hmm. also have a we also have a, a study hall coordinator who's a teacher. That actually lives in the dorms as well. Who's a teacher on mm-hmm. campus, um, mm-hmm. and, and so students have different quiet, reflective spaces to go study on campus. You know, once everybody's gone from school, we can really use mm-hmm. anywhere on the campus. So what we what we do is we use library the library a lot. Um, it's a good good quiet space. We also have a huge college counseling room, which is mm-hmm. right below our dorms, and then we also have a separate counseling room that has a massive table and whiteboards and tv so it, we just want to give students different spaces to study and then that lasts for about two hours it's usually six to eight and then mm-hmm. after that students kind of come in um, we have a kitchen in our boarding program so what that does that's where we actually eat all of our meals um, besides mm-hmm. lunch so we eat breakfast and dinner in our own kitchen um, and so you know students will come in and they'll cook afterwards or you know, That's good. yeah, it's it's a really cool experience because, you know, lately, lately, the last couple months, we've watched like, you know, students teach each other about their different cultures and what they cook within their own cultural dishes. It's, it's been pretty cool. Yeah, that's actually that that's uh, interesting uh, because you have a, a student um, in Portugal that one of, of his, uh, um, he asked if he could be allowed to cook because he likes to to cook and if the school could have a kitchen and it's very interesting that we are talking about the kitchen and you're sharing yeah. the experiences of students cooking. So it's, yeah. it's quite, quite very interesting. I think, yeah, yeah. And, and kind of go to go more on the food, um, you know, for us. Yeah, it's important food. Our food, our food is, I mean, if you go on our website, you can see where we get our food from. We don't. So in the mornings, um, we provide breakfast. It's more of a, a continental style breakfast. You're always mm-hmm. going to have something different. Um, and then, and then in the after in the afternoon for lunch, you eat in the cafeteria, and the cafeteria food here is great. And then for dinner, we actually get all of our dinners sourced from local restaurants from around the city. So it's catered mm-hmm. to us every week. So I mean, uh-huh. you'll have everything from every cuisine you can think of. You know, yesterday. For example, yesterday we had Joe's of Westlake, which is the best Italian food in in the entire city. Um, you know, uh-huh. the, the night before we had um, El Burrito Express, which is which is really good Mexican food. The night before that we had Filipino food. The night before mm-hmm. that we had Chinese food. You know, so we just have different things and different uh-huh. tastes from all around the world that that our kids That's really okay. enjoy. Yeah, food is important, and for us, for for example, Portugal, Spain. Um, we have a good cuisine, mm-hmm. and for us, to, for our students to to go abroad, there's one of the things, uh, and it's important for our health uh, to be able to have good meals and to feel healthy, Absolutely. and to and nutritional meals and and food that you like and variety. Yeah. Uh, some students say, "Oh, um, I love the school and the canteen and the food is good, but it's every every day is the same." <laughs> and it's kind yeah. of gets a little bit boring, but yeah. the fact that you can uh, uh, have different cuisines and 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 
be catered by 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 a local restaurant i think is very very interesting yeah so thank you joe um i yeah, don't you. have any questions do you want to add something just something pop in your mind just the last and uh, just the last uh, uh, sentence about rior then why should a student consider uh, um, the school and, and wanted to know more about the school yeah i think i think you know when i get the question asked of why rudin i think mm -hmm. what always comes to to my mind is that as as someone who lives in the boarding program and sees our students grow not only on a year by year basis but really day to day mm -hmm. the reason why reardon is because students are going to be able to come here and get what they need to grow academically and be prepared for college in the real world but they're also going to get everything outside of the academic realm in the classroom in terms of sports and extracurriculars the performing arts and our community that you can't get anywhere else um, mm -hmm. and that family atmosphere not only within our larger school community but especially in our dorm and boarding community what it does is it is it transforms students and i really truly believe that because i've seen it right and i see mm -hmm. it every day i i see that the growth in our students not only in the classroom but as all of the things that they're interested in their passions but really where i see the growth is as people right mm -hmm. and, and our goal is always to put the student first and make sure that they're getting every opportunity they can to become the best version of themselves and that's that's what i truly believe that we do thank you thank you joe yeah. thank you thank for you. this wonderful presentation and yeah. thank you all for joining us to this uh, recorded presentation thank you very much see you soon bye bye thank you. Bye. bye joe